All right, so today we're gonna to be installing a few things on the bike. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna be installing is gonna be this piece here. That gets installed on the bike and that goes to this Deltran battery tender. I've been using these things for years. I plug my bike up every time I get off of it, especially since I don't ride it every day. My batteries last. I bought one battery my whole life for, for a bike using this. Um, as a matter of fact, my bike has been down. I just went through pictures and it looks like my bike broke August of 2017. I took that battery out and put it on a Deltran charger for the last two years and that is currently what I'm riding on now. So that's gonna be the first thing that we install. This piece goes on the bike. It's got a quick disconnect that I hang out the bottom and every time you're done, you uh, anytime you park the bike, let me get this piece, it's kind of a long cord. You, um, you plug it in here and yeah, that's it. It's nice and easy, nice and simple. You don't have to take your seat up and uh, it just makes it nice and your batteries last a lot longer. So then the second thing that I'm gonna be installing is gonna be this USB charger that's gonna go up front by the RAM mount. This has two USB chargers. Um, I usually have a short cord that goes to my phone. Uh, so this one gets installed up front it's waterproof when you close this. You do gotta make sure you close it because it's not waterproof without that. But you close that and uh, you don't have to worry about it. So I've used those on the bike for a long time. And then the last thing I installed or that I'm going to be installing is gonna be another one. This one is just a single USB and the cord is a little bit shorter to go to that. So a little bit shorter. I got this from Cycle Gear. Um, this one, I actually put this in the trunk. So basically, the one up front is cool, but what I realized was if I need to charge my phone on my GoPro, but I want to walk away from my, uh, from my bike, I didn't like to leave it there. So this allows me to switch over, put it in the trunk, charge the GoPro when I walk away, or charge my phone when I walk away, and not have to worry about is my phone still going to be there when I get back. So that's what I'm going to be installing today, a little step-by-step -step video, those three things, and uh, it's a pretty easy install. The worst one is going to be the one that has to go to the bike or uh, go all the way from the battery to the front of the bike. That's the worst one and it's not that hard. So let's get to it. All right, so as you can see, I've got my seats removed and this is a um, AGM battery that I get from AutoZone. I get all my batteries from AutoZone just because AutoZone has a warranty and if I my battery dies on any long trip i'm usually always going to find an auto zone so this one has two extra screw holes in the back i usually put up my accessories back here but this is a two-year-old battery like i said i seem to have lost those screws and i don't have them with me there's nothing to just change it later and move them over once i get new ones but for right now i'm gonna just set everything in place because everything has to go on the battery terminals i'm just gonna run the wires everywhere that i need it and then plug them all in at the end so the first thing i'm gonna go ahead and do is gonna do the um the charger that's gonna go to the trunk So the easiest thing to do would be feed this wire right through here and tidy it up as much as you can, which I'm gonna have to go and get some uh, zip ties, I think. I might have some in my toolbox, but I think I might've used them all. Feed it right through here. If you need some slack, I usually leave a little bit of slack back here. If I need to pull it out, plug it in, and drop it back in there. I'll clean it up right here. You can even zip tie it if you wanted to right here. Um, but I actually use my trunk a lot. I use a, I have safety chains for when I'm going like in a mall or something, you know, just, I know nothing makes these things unstealable, but makes it a little bit harder. So I'm gonna zip tie that right there. This is your negative cable. This is your positive cable. And it does come pre-fused. Let's see what size fuse this is so we know. Goodness, if I could open it. All right, so this is a 7.5 amp fuse. So, not a big one. So that's positive, that's negative. I'm gonna take this zip, I'm gonna take this little bundle here, zip tie it, and probably just stuff it down here. So that's what I'm most likely gonna do right there. Keep it nice and clean. Wires running all in the same direction. That's where that's gonna go. 
The second thing that I'm going to do is the Deltran Quick Charger. Um, so this is a trickle charger. It's not going to overcharge your battery and blow it up. Once your battery gets full, it stops charging it and it just sits there and maintains that level of charge for your battery. So it's no problem leaving your charger on there long term. I had my battery on there for two years and it kept it fully charged. And anytime I get done riding, I come back in and I plug it in. So from what I understand, engines and vehicles work best when everything is working at its best potential, including the battery. So why not have a full battery every time you get on the bike? So what I like to do is I like to run it right over here. On the Jixxer, we have a hole right here by the brake reservoir, and I'll bring you around in a second, but there's a hole in the frame right by the brake reservoir. And uh, feed it right through there, and you can stuff it back in when you're not charging it, but it's easy access to pull it back through. So that's usually what I do with that. And it's a short cord, so you don't really have to worry about how you're running that one. You just kind of make sure you get the wires out the way and plug it up from there. So let me bring you guys over to this side so you can see what I did. All right, so here we are. It's a little bit of a glare, but this is where the wire goes. Anytime I'm done, I plug it in right here. And uh, when I'm done charging, when I'm ready to ride, you just stuff it back in that hole and you can't see it. Let's see, step back. You can't see us in there. So no one's ever came up to me and said, oh, what's that wire in there? And I've literally used that since I was 20 years old on my bike. So it's always something that I use. And yeah, it's just, it's good. So that's an easy one. The worst one is going to be the, um, the front charger, which I'm going to have to wait on that one because I think I need to readjust my front fairing. And let me show you why. I put this nose fairing on and the more I look at it, I think that All right, I seem to have lost my volume there, but I um, I think when I installed the nose fairing that I might have did this wrong. I think this plastic needs to go under this frame here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this nose fairing off one more time and get that under there. When I was trying to put in my mirrors, there's a little bit of a gap. It doesn't look right. So I think I installed it wrong. And I actually just watched a video on a windscreen removal for this year Jixxer and it looks like this is under there. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do, pop it under there, see if my fitment's a little better and decide from there. And then I will be able to run my front charger up and through because I actually run it through the nose fairing. So it would be dumb to run it through and have to take it off for that. So that's what I'm gonna do first and we'll get right back to it. So I went ahead and fixed that and that's actually definitely the way it's supposed to be. That fairing is supposed to be under your front frame for your tachometer and everything so it's fitment's much better I don't have that gap between the mirror it might have been why I broke the first mirror trying to screw them in I couldn't get them tight I ended up breaking the stud so the fitment's much better this way um, so I went ahead and did that um, while I was there in the toolbox I ended up finding my zip ties so I zip tied the wire to the back USB charger I just tucked them in down there um, trying to make it as clean as possible and then I also let's come around to this side I zip tied the actual charger to the frame here. There's a screw. Um, I think if you have the servo motor or the California model, they use their a screw hole here. So what I did was I actually zip tied it. And now I have access to it right there. Open it, USB, plug it in. It's not just around there falling around, making noise and all that good stuff. So that's what I'm gonna that's how I'm gonna go ahead and leave this and let's go ahead and do the front charger. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna go ahead and run the wires, get them in place, find out which way I wanna run them to make sure they're clear of everything mechanical. I'm gonna run them down this side of the frame, which is where the throttle body um, or the throttle cable is and it actually moves there. So make sure it's out the way, keep it nice and clean. This charger, I got this on, I wanna say AutoZone a few years ago and it comes already wrapped in black. So where I run it all the way up to the front, it's, it's a nice clean look. It had a mount that I was using. I had it zip tied before. That mount actually broke. So what I think I'm gonna use is just probably use some GoPro tape and uh, mount it right up to this nose fairing right here once I get everything on. But for now, I can run it up there and just at least make sure it looks clean. So let me find out which way I'm gonna route it. I'm sure there's some wires from the front to the battery that I can follow and uh, just chase it in that way. So let's get to it.
wiring harness down here um, that goes from your lighting and all your controls. It follows down to the frame and I basically, oh, you can't even see me. I basically lined it down with the frame. I'm gonna zip tie it along the way to some screws so it stays out of the way of the throttle bodies here. I'm gonna zip tie it here and ran it under the tank, under the tank and into the battery compartment. There's really not a wire, not a lot of wire left. So I'm gonna zip tie it to the wire that's already here from the previous charger. And then I have my two connections here. Everything's color coded red and black. So it looks like a little bit of a mess in here right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and attach them, zip tie them all one more time and go from there. So let's go. All right, so I've got my Galaxy Note 9 here. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. Access is nice and easy. Plug it in. And that is the charge. And it doesn't even say slow charge. Usually it'll say, you know, slow charge for this thing, even on the wall sometimes if I'm not using the right outlet. But here, it's a regular charge. So now, Let's go ahead and go to the front. Before I zip tie this one in, let's do the same thing. Note nine, same cord. Which way does it go? There we go. And all right, we got the same thing. One hour, 12 minutes, so that is a quick charge. Usually it'll say slow charging. Let's go ahead and try the second USB port, see if that one's any slower. Nope, same thing. So both of those work. So the last thing to check would be the charger down here. So let me go grab that charger, plug that in real quick. So here goes my Deltran charger. <clears throat> they have different models and different sizes. I just got the small one for this. My car is, I use the bigger one, but on something like dirt bike or four wheeler motorcycle, I just use the, the small one that they have. Plug it in. And according to this light, I've got a steady red and steady red means, oh, that's Spanish on that side. Steady red means battery charging. So it tells you the indicator. Flashing red means there's, uh, there's no battery charging. So let's see that one. Hopefully you guys can see that. No battery charging. The minute I plug it in, the battery's charging. So this is working too. Um, if it's flashing green, that means the battery's charging and it's more than 80%. And when it's steady green, it, uh, it's fully charged. So every battery, diff uh, differs as far as how long it takes but usually when i come home and plug mine in mine's red for about 20 minutes it blinks green for about 20 minutes and then it goes full on green so my battery never really gets a chance to die since i plug it in every day so all right so what i'm going to do is go ahead and uh, get zip tie happy make that clean as uh, possible and figure out where i'm going to mount the front charger so let's get to it
All right, so I use the GoPro 3M tape to mount the uh, the front charger here. So I've got it tucked away pretty good. You can't even see any wires. I tucked it right behind the speedometer into the bike all the way to the battery. So that one's done. Got my short cord all the way here to the ram mount. And then coming to the back, I've got my rear charger. I zip tied it to the frame here in the trunk. That's in there pretty good, not moving around. I've got plenty of space. You know, Jason's got a pretty big trunk, so plenty of space for me to do whatever I need. And when I want to pull over and charge my GoPro, I can just drop it in the back, so. So this is gonna be the end of this video, guys. It's late. I appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, comment, all that. And uh, next time you see the bike, I'm gonna go ahead and put plastics on it, man. I'm gonna try to do it tonight, but my battery's dying on this thing. Probably won't be able to follow me. Plastics are plastic, so. Take a few screws, pop them in. Take a few screws, pop them off. Nothing too bad. So next time you see it, Project Jigsaw will be fully dressed. I'm going to go get some sleep. Check in next time.